You're gonna start Whoa! This. Look at that. So, uh, I'm Mitchell with Super Cool HVAC. I'm here with Portland. Uh, we are doing an experiment today. Uh, somebody we used to work with uh, gave, us, gave me a call and said that the uh, rep from their factory rep from a company I won't name, but they're hard to stop, uh, came up with a, a strategy for testing cracked heat exchangers. And they said that you can see a cracked heat exchanger by a static pressure reading across your inducer when the uh, when the blower motor kicks on and the inducer is off, uh, saying that you could you would see static pressure pushing on the inducer. You'd see a positive static uh, pressure on your uh, if you hook up to your inducer uh, back up, your inducer pressure hoses, and then you would see static pressure if there uh, you'd see positive static pressure if you had uh, a heat exchanger failure and uh, I'm calling BS and uh, so we put this together we got a furnace tied into the gas here we put two plenums on the sorry we put two coils on the top uh, to give it a little more static pressure and to have some mixing so we can check CO uh, in the supplier stream we've got uh, we've got this thing running with about uh, 0 0.7 inches of static which is pretty accurate for uh, where we live here in Charlotte with crappy duct work on the supply and the return. Uh, we've got about uh, 0.4 inches of static on the return and about, or sorry, 0.3 inches of static on the return and 0.4 on the supply. So that would be potentially 0.4 inches of static pushing on that heat, heat exchanger if it were uh, failed. So we're going to uh, wind this up and uh, we're going to do some testing and uh, we're going to put some holes in this ex uh, this heat exchanger and see if we can actually get this thing to uh, to drive up the, uh, we're going to uh, see if we can either get it to drive up CO in the uh, flue gas, CO in the airstream, and then we're going to see if we can, uh, the holes in the heat exchanger will actually show up with the inducer not running and the, uh, uh, show up on the static with the inducer not running and the uh, blower on. We'll see if we can find that reading because uh, I just don't buy it. This is with the unmolested heat exchanger, no holes in it. Uh, we're running the blower only and uh, the inducer off. We're gonna see if we see anything across this, uh, this uh, manometer. This is reading out to three significant figures, so uh, we should have, uh, it's gonna show up. This would pick it up much better than most uh, technicians manometers that are probably only gonna read to a hundredth of an inch of water column. Point, point zero 0.02 and with the blower off, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, yeah, same thing. So this heat exchanger not showing any uh, difference across the uh, the pressure switch. Now we're gonna put some holes in this thing and we're gonna see what it does. All right, so yeah, we got this uh, Testo 310 combustion analyzer is calibrated last year. So it's um, pretty, should be pretty accurate. We're gonna go ahead and um, get this in the exhaust vent stream here. I'm gonna make sure that there's no abnormal CO, CO readings or anything like that. Get a baseline on the combustion uh, analysis. So we're gonna put this on to combustion. We got about three inches of water column on the uh, on the gas side, which is factory spec. Uh, we have uh, combustion analysis is in there. Right now we're doing a baseline before we poke holes in this heat exchanger. Uh, and we'll show you that heat exchanger before we sh uh, shoot a bunch of holes in it. This thing's probably 20 years old. Heat exchanger looks all right. But uh, you've, we've got a uh, 14% O2, uh, 16 parts per million in CO, and this thing's been running for about five minutes. Uh, 16, 17 ppm, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, we'll also see if we put holes in this, is that gonna cause the uh, the CO to skyrocket? And uh, actually we could watch and see if the CO skyrockets when we uh, dial up the gas pressure here. We can, uh, we'll, Simulate a poorly tuned furnace. We're now at uh, pushing five inches of water column, 4.7 inches of water column, and you can watch your CO still hasn't really skyrocketed. Undiluted CO, yeah, 52, and that's way out of spec. Like this would be overfiring 
by over an inch of water column. That's surprising that an extra inch of water column is still not causing CO in this furnace. Now hmm. this flue pipe is, doesn't have a whole lot of bends in it, it's not super long. We got a five inch stack, we don't have any elbows, we don't have a cap on the end. But I mean, even uh, if we did have this at like, with a cap on it, uh, it's still, it's still running great. Let's, uh, let's tear this thing apart and we'll, uh, we'll start poking some holes in this thing. I'm gonna turn it off, cool the heat exchanger down before we uh, cut the gas, let the blower run, cool the heat exchanger down before we cut the power and, uh, and start poking holes in this uh, heat exchanger. One of the things I've heard a lot is uh, if the furnace is making over 300 CO, uh, parts per million of CO, cracked heat exchanger, people will claim all oh, the things. Uh, I, I, I use my custom combustion, a lot of techs are saying their combustion analysis, they see high CO, that means the heat exchanger is wrecked. Uh, not true. Cortland has found many heat exchangers that are fine, brand new installs with misaligned burners that are causing high CO. So this, uh, in, he, before we put, start putting holes in here, we're gonna, we, we're back at a, we're about 20, uh, 61 uh, undiluted CO, 23 parts per million CO. We've got, uh, we're gonna move the burner and show how this causes high CO. And uh, he's seen this on ICP and carrier units shipped from the factory with misaligned burners causing in excess of three, four, five hundred uh, parts per million of, uh, of carbon monoxide just because the burners weren't aligned. So we, we uh, took these screws out. I'm gonna wrench on this with the, with the pliers wrench. We're gonna aim this out of the way and see what happens to our uh, carbon monoxide. Look at that. So carbon monoxide is skyrocketing just because the burners are no longer aligned. We've more than doubled it. Now we're over triple. I'm just gonna keep climbing. Is this a bad heat exchanger? Did I just did I just ruin the heat exchanger, or is it just simply a manufacturing defect, or a man, or, or an install error? Maybe some maybe uh, the installer just wrenched the absolute bejesus out of the uh, out of the black pipe when they screwed it into the regulator, and the, now it's uh, or they lifted it by the uh, by the, uh, the the regulator. We're three we're over 300 C, uh, parts per million of CO. We don't have. A, we didn't change anything with the heat exchanger. We've changed nothing. Now we'll watch this crawl back down. It's still climbing. We'll watch this crawl back down by realigning the, the burners. It's gonna settle out, yes, and now it's dropping. We could film this until it drops right back down to where it was, at 60 parts per million and with uh, undiluted and whatever it was, 20 on the low side. Or we could tell the customer that they have a cracked heat exchanger, sell a new furnace. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. Depends how you want to run it. <laughs> I'm probably just going to realign the burners. <laughs> <laughs> this is one example why it's pretty important while commissioning systems, um, gas furnaces, gas appliances. You want to do a combustion analysis just to, just to make sure that the installers didn't uh, tweak that burner. Sometimes people like to carry it and you know just it's usually done through this twisting of this pipe to you know putting too much to, uh, torque on the pipe and it just bends this whole manifold out of whack so you want to um, always try to commission these things with at least one initial combustion analysis just to make sure she's properly firing so before we start poking holes in we should probably watch this make sure it gets down it said 70 parts per million undiluted and my mate still had that, I oh, wrenched no, up right. on it pretty hard. We'll see if we can get it aligned a little better. Another visual way that you can actually tell an indication that your um, your burner is out of alignment is you're going to see that flame will actually be pointing, instead of pointing straight back into that reservoir, into the heat exchanger, it's going to be pointing either up or down. And it's going to either be, you'll, you'll, you'll even sometimes see like burnt spots on the top of the uh, orifice, well not the orifice, but just the um, inlet for the heat exchanger, it'll be like charred on the, either the top or bottom. Those are visual indications that you're going to be misaligned on your burner. But it's not going to be blatant like we showed here where we where it's like crooked or cocked. It's usually a very subtle um, alignment error. So yeah, we're back down to about 74 parts per million. That's pretty comfortable. It's gonna be down there. Yeah. Where those, sometimes those flames can impinge at the back. You can actually see the back side of that heat exchanger is kinda. Um, Toasty looking. Yeah, so 
but we're not going to probably be able to have access to that. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and cut in an access panel. That way we can actually access the heat exchanger. Careful with this stuff, it's sharp. Okay. How, you got All a right. bunch more to do there though, right? Now we can kind of close and open this okay. thing. Alright, just making sure. Alright. We're gonna have the most realistic. Cool. This is gonna be the most realistic uh nice. So now we can see the hottest portion of the heat oh, exchanger. We're gonna blow holes into this section here one at a time. We can do that while it's running and everything now with this access panel, so that's pretty sweet. I'm not doing it while it's running. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's going to be hot as hell. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that, I would say that's going to be probably one of your most common spots to see a heat exchanger blow out from the flame, at least, when I see package units with holes in them, things like that. Yep. I might want to start off with that. Oh, I'll go a little Something bigger. smaller? Smaller than this. Is this a good size hole to start with, do you think? That's like a quarter inch self tapper. We probably need to start I mean, off. I've seen bigger people than that. condemn furnaces with smaller holes than that. Yeah, let's just start with that. So we got uh, we got a little hole in the back of the heat exchanger. We have uh, we now ha I'm running it actually on Y speed tap, so this is the highest speed tap, and uh, we have not had any increase in uh, the water column uh, across the pressure switch with that little hole. But uh, it's coming up a hair. Less than what a normal, uh, no, there it's right back down to zero. So this is less than, none of this would even pick up on a on a, uh, on a manometer that would only read two uh, to the hundredths of an inch of water column. We can turn this back off. Same as it was before. Not the change blower on, blower off. Less than two thousandths of a uh, inch of water column, if that. Now let's Let's open that hole up and see how, how much bigger we have to get before we start to see uh, a change in this. Nice. And that would be picking up probably about as high of uh, static as it would. I mean, being on the back side and towards the bottom, the air is going to be blowing pretty much directly at that. Yeah. But you're not going to see it show up because... The holes for the uh, the heat exchanger are way bigger, and the flue pipe are way bigger than uh, than that hole. So I mean, the air blowing through there is not going to pick up on the on here. So we'll see. Plug it in now. We got a three eighths hole. No change in static pressure. And then now we'll, we'll now we got a, a mediocre size hole in there. We'll uh, we'll fire it up and see if we can see a change in CO from that oh, uh, right. 70 parts per million. Hold on, she's raising a little something. Eh. Okay, so we have five thousandths of an inch of water column. That would still less th that it would not even round up if you were only reading hundreds of an inch of water column on a normal manometer, and it's back down at zero again. Now, do we want to plug up the stack in the inlet and see what that does before we put any bigger holes? Like, just put like some tape over the inlets here, and yeah. we can just do those. I put my hand over that one. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, you probably still have to put your hand over it. So you want to cover your exhaust you're, you're giving discharge. them a lot of benefit of the doubt that this was because this is not what he was <laughs> i know it <laughs> he was telling people to do okay so i'm gonna break i'm probably gonna break that if i try to do this i'm oh. either gonna have to remove my uh my igniter or i'm gonna end up breaking it let me shove a glove in there let me shove some gloves in there that you're, might... gonna, you're gonna break that igniter <laughs> so the theory is so you're 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 above your blower before your coil this is all under positive static pressure the blower is pushing up against here. Now your inducer is under negative pressure. It's pulling the flame through here and pushing it out through the, uh, the, the flue pipe. So the furnace is designed so that the flue gases cannot come in contact with your, uh, with your supply or your return air by the way that it's designed. So the theory that, that they're saying is that, well, if you have the, the inducer off, 
that air would come through here. Well, the problem is you got big holes here uh, for your flue pipe, and you got big holes for your heat exchanger. That air is not going to, uh, that, that, that little hole is not going to make an impact while you have these massive holes on either side of this to, uh, to your, uh, to your stat static pressure that you're gonna read through your, uh, your test port on your inducer. So Cortland's theory is that yes, it, would, it may show up if you were able to somehow clog, plug both ends of your heat exchanger, then you, with the inducer off, you could potentially be driving supply air into the inducer. So if this, this theory of how to check your heat exchanger by doing this, which is not an AHRI approved method, again, uh, was going to work, we'd have to close both the top and the bottom. So we're going to try that now. He's instead of tape because you can't really stick tape in there without breaking your uh, it, uh, your uh, igniter, which even this is a risk at breaking your igniter. Trying to jam a glove around a, a hot surface <laughs> igniter is uh, it's very sketchy. Uh, and so we've we've he's trying to jam gloves in there, and we're uh, and we got a uh, we can cl cover the flue pipe with his hand, and we'll watch and see what this thing does. Now you can see it. Okay, so this could potentially work. Now that's 0.3 inches. If we you want to cover everything up, you can make it work. Okay. Do we want to put some tape over that hole to see if it, if it, uh, see if that 0.3 inches goes down? Point tape over what hole? That's in the heat exchanger. Oh yeah, yeah. I could, uh, I could cover the hole up here. Keep your hand on there. I'll open this up, and I will uh, put a piece of tape over that hole. We'll see if it changes that. On, on the So we lost all that static pressure. That's pretty cool. It went away. So we covered the hole up. Let's see what we got. Go down. Nice. Nothing. Okay. Beautiful. So that would work. Let's capture the flame disturbance as well when the blower cuts on. Just to. So oh, we now know. that there's a hole in it. Which side did we put the hole in? This side, right? Yeah. It looks the same. So you, I mean, I don't think you could visually look at holes and say one of these has a cracked heat exchanger because. Or one of these has a whole a compromised heat exchanger because the flame is dancing differently. They look the same. Well, the fan's got to cut on first. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Once the fan goes on. Yeah. Did you see an impact? I mean, yeah, slightly. This one here, yeah, I could. It slightly dancing. started getting louder and not dancing much though. So. Yeah, it is. You can see it's turbulent. That's interesting. I didn't think about actually isolating the burner. I don't. I mean, that is not... It's not significant. If you look from one to the other, I don't think there's really a difference between the two. Like, not this one. Either. Yeah, it might be psychological. so big, we're going to see... I want to I go ham until we, can get, <laughs> until we see, like, what does it take to get this thing to, to roll out? All right, let's uh, let's test the flue gas now. So we got uh, now our CO is basically where it was before. We've decided we'd also look at excess air. We're at uh, 164. Uh, our undiluted CO is at 70, which is exactly where it was before. Uh, undiluted CO is at 70. CO is now that's up a hair. Yeah, we were at 22 before, something like that. 23. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's up a hair. Let's make the hole bigger and see what we find. So what we're gonna do is we put another hole in that thing. A bigger, you got a bigger bit? So two 11 16 inch size holes. Let's see what that does. I definitely, I bet you that's, that's definitely gonna disturb the flame. I would hope. I don't think I can see the difference. You'll see. Watch. I'm looking, okay, you look at the right side. Then you look at the left side. Those flames look the same. Watching this blower. Oh, when the blower can get to I keep forgetting the blower. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. I mean, it dances a little more on the left. Like, I mean, almost imperceivable. But you have and to you're go by. You're only going to notice that if that crack happens to be really low on the heat exchanger. That's very. It's almost starting to roll out. Look at that. It is starting to roll out a little on the left. 
Yeah. Alright, let's see who does CO. Alright, so we put the we've got two almost three quarter inch holes in the back of the heat exchanger, big holes. We're gonna check your uh, our supply air CO. So we have zero parts per million CO in the supply air, even with a massive hole in the heat exchanger. So let's just go from the top that yeah, way. Try, I mean, try in different spots. I mean, you might catch a hot spot where exactly. the turbulent air is just... Let's just give it the best... This best. isn't the best... I mean, this isn't the best example because we don't have like full duct work on here where it's had a long time to mix the air. That's why we part of the reason we added the second coil on top was both to add the static pressure and to kind of mix the air a little bit further. Not the Yeah, there's no CO in the in the supply in the supply. Now let's check the let's check your flue gas. Let's see where we're at now on the start. Oh CO on top is Huh. There we go. Interesting. Now now we gotta... You wanna know what that is? Tell them exactly. what it is, why it's doing that. Because there's excess air aching it into the... Uh, what no. Do you I believe it's due to the impinging of the flame. Up here? You're, you're getting the same essential effect as if you had a misaligned burner. Due well, to that... But it's also, it's also mixing air back in there and probably causing the, uh, the gas to not burn the whole way as, as it goes through that turbulent portion. So, if you have a massive hole in the heat exchanger, Nice. You've got, okay, we need to protect the, uh... Well, I was off on that. I was way wrong with that. So, essentially... So a massive hole will create CO in the, uh, in the flue pipe. Because as you can see, that flame is essentially impinging on the outer perimeter of that or of that, um, inlet of the heat exchanger. So that impingement is going to increase your, your CO. Units off. We're gonna go into. We're gonna blow the blower again at high speed on the high speed tap. I got Y connected, uh, and we're gonna fire it up. It's mostly zeroed out. It's reading about eight thousandths of an inch of water column. That's on the negative now, pressure. This is with the inducer off. We're gonna see if we're seeing now. So this is inducer off without the flue pipe covered, without the uh, burners covered, and again, it's gone up three thousandths, which would not be read by a normal manometer that you're carrying. That reads only to hundreds. In fact, okay, so it hasn't really gone up at all. So, if we covered up the burners again and the flue pipe, potentially we would see. But well, I mean, we could pop that flue yeah, pipe. Yeah, let's off just cover just the flue pipe. See if, if covering just the flue pipe causes that to go up. Oh yeah, significant. That's uh, yeah, yeah, that's it that's significant. Up if you could cover the flue pipe with the two massive holes in it. So less than an inch, or sorry, less than a one hundredth of an inch of water column. On, no change. Now, wait, was it positive when I put my hand over there? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yep. Okay, so you get it. it if you did it on the Pascal scale, you'd see it would be more significant. Who's carrying a Pascal freaking manometer in their <laughs> tech bag? <laughs> Besides it's just you. <laughs> Besides <it's> you. <laughs> I'm just recording this. That's what we're looking like as far as holes. So we've got four big, what are those? Uh, three quarter inch holes. Three quarter inch. We want to see if that's going to be enough to cause some rollout in that, um, in the uh, burner assembly, as well as introduce CO into the supply air uh, stream. So let's see here. All right, so that it's, thing is, oh, oh, look at that, it's without even the blower. Out, it's rolling out without even having the blower on right now. Damn. So it's corrupted. The fact that there's a massive hole in the, in the heat exchanger, it's not pulling through as much. I bet you you're, you're going to start to see this come down. You're going to start Whoa. to see. Whoa. Look at that. Still not enough to trip that rollout switch, I don't think. You think that's significant enough to tell that's based off the blower? Uh, if your flame looked like that in the field, 
when the blower kicked on. Would you would you be able to call that a heat exchanger at that point? I think visually, uh, I probably would not. I would say something's up. Yeah. Visually, something's up. <laughs> Audibly, it sounds weird. Yeah. But I mean, those are not very scientific uh, responses. <laughs> like, audibly it sounds weird and visually it looks messed up. Like, uh, like, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look good. Not so, at all. We're still not, I bet you we still don't have CO in the, in, the, in the supplier. I don't even need to test the stack. We know it's going to be through the roof. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to know if, it, if we get CO in the supplier and then I want to know how big a freaking hole we have to put in this thing before we start to get rollout to the point where this furnace is going to shut itself down. <laughs> that's still not even... It's causing rollout on the opposite burner too. Yeah! Wow! Look how oh, thick there we're gonna there hit, it is. Yeah, we're gonna hit the rollout switch for sure. I stand corrected. So she just rolled out. You heard the switch click. So yeah, we're going to be checking supply air again uh, for CO. So we got that pretty much zero zeroed out to ambient. Zero parts per million. Let it fire up. And uh, like once again, this furnace is producing thousands of parts per million based off of these holes and the uh, impingement that's going on in the burner so it's still proven the uh, even with a massive hole in it it still proves the uh, pressure switch mm, yep it's funny that it starts out pretty much fine well and then when the blower kicked on it stayed kind of sketchy for a minute and then it, it was like after it ran for a minute was when it went ham mm. And it took some time for the rollout switch to kick. Look at that. See the sound difference though? That's what you're looking for. That's a that is that's significant, bro. Significant. Like when it gets loud like that. You can't just say off of the sound. But it might not be the actual heat exchanger holes. It could be somewhere a crack or a seam in your return where the actual return air is pulling in. But if that's all sealed, it should not be changing that much of a difference when that blower comes on. Audibly. So we're still looking here. We're not getting any CO. We're gonna move it around. I try to give it as the best chance by putting it on the right side of the furnace where our our holes are located. I'm smelling a little bit of uh, combustion gas. I don't know. I don't know why I'm not getting any CO though. I feel like I smell it. Put it at our return. Okay, now it's look, look, look at this rollout. Oh, whoa! Yeah, I saw that. Okay, how was the CO up there? It, it was came. zero. Is that zero? Still zero. We yeah. Like zero parts per million CO. Still. So now we see the importance of rollout switches and why they're so vi uh, vital. Uh, to the safety of these furnaces, so don't bypass rollout switches anybody out there Who wants to take that chance? Now let's bypass the rollout switches. <laughs> All right, so now have we have four massive holes in the heat exchanger uh, We've seen that it kicks off on rollout uh, Zero parts per million in the flue pipe or sorry <laughs> tons of parts per million in the flue <laughs> pipe uh, zero CO in the uh, in the supply air even with four massive holes in the heat exchanger now we're going to check and see uh, if this theory of checking the, uh, the, the uh, if you had a massive hole, will you still be able to see, see that uh, on with your manometer across the pressure switch? Wait, so that's even less. Wait, so that's even less than we had two holes in there. So we had two three inch, three quarter inch holes in there, and we were seeing almost you're seeing like five to eight hundredths of an inch of water column we are now seeing not even a hundredth of an inch of water column with the with four holes in the heat exchanger uh, if we cover up the if we cover up the flue pipe let's see if we can see it start to rise and you can so if you're gonna trust 16 hundredths of an inch of water column if you can cover up the flue pipe and you are okay diagnosing the, the unit as having a cracked heat exchanger when you have four three-quarter inch holes in there. 
I mean, you could potentially use this method. It's not approved by AHRI. It's not particularly scientific. And it only seems to show if you cover up the flue pipe, or ideally you're covering up the burner inlets and the flue pipe, then you can you could count on it. But if you're not going to do all those things, this method doesn't work at all, period. Not to mention by this point, you'd already have uh, non-invasive means of telling based off the rollout <laughs> and the uh, impingement of the flame. Or using a freaking uh, combustion analysis, which you should have been doing, which we've seen, you got CO through the roof, that you probably would be looking into that. Was it a misaligned burner? Was it, uh, is it potentially could holes in the heat exchanger? And then you could try this silly method if uh, you're still gonna trust it despite this not being approved or working at all. <laughs> nice.